five letters. All of these are publicly available on the websites, which means that the, the work that we have today to play with the media, to market, to put this in place, is a job in this room, to really answer your questions, to take your thoughts, and to really explain the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement that will really show the opportunities. The most important part of this uh, agreement is that there is a lot of opportunities that will arise. After putting it in models, of economic models, both sides, we saw growth in our economy in the next 10 years. It will add 1.7% of GDP growth in the UAE's economy in the next uh, decade. It will add 140,000 jobs in the market alone. That by itself is huge for both economies by doing only one comprehensive economic partnership agreement. The most important part of this as well, that the comprehensive economic partnership agreement is very agile and is very nimble. We have chapters in the agreement that allowed as well for future discussion, such as the digital economy and digital trade. This is a chapter that was kept for future discussions in the future as well, to make sure that we evolve as well with such technologies of the future. The most important as well, that government procurement chapter has allowed for the first time to allow companies to be part of, part of government investments in both nations, and this is something as well to really highlight. The other highlight I would like to make sure as well that I cover is the intellectual property chapter, the investment chapter that really brought a lot as well to the comprehensive. Why is it called comprehensive? Why is it not called free trade? This is the difference. It has chapters not just in trade. It has chapters that covers comprehensive economic aspects of it. It has a big chapter as well on the small and medium enterprises, a place where we need to make sure that 90% of our economy are SMEs. This needs as well a huge part of our work to make sure that we expel. Just now, launching the India UAE Startup Bridge, a website, a place for India and UAE's company startups to really bridge between them together using the, the Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. This is an opportunity for all of us to really come together today. And we, we are here today with a delegation, more than 85 members from the UAE, from all different parts of the Emirates, coming together, dialoguing, in discussion, we were in New Delhi for two days. We we're here in Mumbai as well. This is something as well which is very important for us to show, to showcase as well. We are planning to go more to other cities in India in the future, near future to really explain and to really bring the CEPA to life where business to business and investments happens. I tell my brother Priyush that today our job is done in signing the agreement. But our job as well now has a new agenda is to explain it to the, uh, the business uh, environment, to explain it to everybody who are looking at this investment opportunities. I sat with the UAE business uh, investment in, the, in the India today, this morning, and I told them, give me your opportunities. Let's fast track. We have a UAE India fast track desk that has been established and that actually put things quickly through the, through the, the ambassador and the embassies that actually can push opportunities so this fast track desk, thanks to His Excellency Piyush Goyal for bringing this idea, for putting it up forward. And I think now we started to solve a lot of the challenges, opening as well investment opportunities through the fast track desk that, uh, that is actually being in place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. May I now request Mr. Piyush Goyal to give his remarks, please. Thank you, Excellency Minister Abdullah for your very warm words. This is your press conference, so I won't take uh, too much time. But thank you for agreeing to my request to come to my home city of Mumbai. Uh, this is the financial and commercial capital. And businesses were really looking forward to engaging with you. This is an uh, agreement of many historic firsts. It's the first agreement UAE has ever done with any country in the world. And it's the fastest agreement that was finalized in 88 days and then entered into force. It was brought into a, a, a actual implementation on earlier this month, on the 2nd of May. And uh, 
probably never before have we seen the speed with which businesses have started acting on it. In fact, uh, I really appreciate the idea that uh, Minister Abdullah has given that we take our business teams to every part of the country in India and in the UAE and get our businesses to engage, facilitate that, handhold the initial period so that the true benefits of the FTA can be enjoyed by both countries. It opens the doors for many, particularly labor-intensive sectors. You all know that UAE doesn't have too much or a large population. And therefore, for labor-intensive sectors like textiles, gem and jewelry, pharmaceuticals, agri-products, leather, engineering goods, auto components, this agreement opens the door not only to UAE, but UAE, as many of us are aware, is a transit point for large parts of Africa, CIS countries, the Gulf region, with them having eliminated almost duties on 99% of the products that India exports to UAE, also having accepted a fast-track mechanism for pharma goods by which, based on our, agree, on our approvals of our pharma companies or pharma products with US, Canada, EU, UK, or Japan, our pharma products will get immediate access to the UAE market. We believe that trade will grow to at least $100 billion in the near future. Our own commitment of both ministers and our leaders his Majesty, uh, the, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Modi is to take this to much, much higher levels. And I do believe that our business persons are very excited. It will add at least a million jobs to people in India. Young boys and girls will get opportunity also through the startup ecosystem about which Minister Abdullah just spoke. There's also huge potential for engagement on skill development and education. We are looking at significant investments and the UAE has committed over a hundred billion dollars of investments into India, into manufacturing, infrastructure, services. So really this is like a booster shot. This uh, agreement will give the Indian economy wings it will add to the GDP of both countries. It will add jobs in both countries. It will add to economic activity in both countries. It will add to opportunities for young boys and girls and innovation in both countries. We have recently had a very successful foray at the Dubai Expo. And I think this partnership is defined best when you look at our uh, tagline at Dubai Expo. It's about openness, it's about opportunity, and it's about growth. Thank you very much, my friend, my brother, Minister Abdullah, and I look forward to working closely with UAE in the years to come. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for your remarks, sir. We can now open the floor for questions and answers. Uh, can we begin now? Yes, Jeevan. We can begin with uh, Jeevan, sir. Please hand over the mic to him. Namaskar, sir. Jeevan Bhausar from All India Radio. Sir, we would like to know more about the uh, India UAE Startup Bridge. Well, I think uh, the idea is that there are a large number of startups who have emerged in the last six years. We have over 65,000 registered with DPIIT. Now India has over 100 unicorns. We are the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. Similarly, in the UAE, young boys and girls are coming up with excellent investment opportunities or excellent innovative ideas. Uh, our young minister was telling me this morning about a startup that had come to him for an initial seed capital. He lost that opportunity, and it's now a unicorn. So uh, both countries are young boys and girls make us proud. And I'm sure uh, this bridge will help expand exchange of ideas and also lead to large amounts of investment opportunities for young startups in both countries. 
So uh, thank you for the question. I think one of the things we look forward to in the UAE is to help our SMEs and startups grow internationally. And we do it in many ways. We do it through funding, through digitization, but equally important through expansion. So we have decided that we'll create bilateral agreements with certain countries where we make it that much easier for companies to have presence in those countries and vice versa. Obviously, India is the first one we launched this with. It's a plan that we have in other geographies. But this first starts by providing transparency on requirements, transparency on supply chains between UAE and, and, uh, and India. And also from a government perspective, it gives access to things like the business council, the commercial attache. So it makes it much easier for companies to expand both ways. And that is the main purpose. Uh, India is the first country we provide this bridge with. It's a natural one. We had a historical bridge, but this is a digital bridge, which will make it even much easier. Thank you. There's a very good uh, write-up on this bridge, which uh, my colleague, uh, Ms. Sanil Agarwal, can uh, email to you if you tell him. I, I, I think it very well and captures the possibilities that this bridge has to offer. Yeah, this we'll arrange to distribute it, sir. It yeah, we'll, we'll distribute this one. Yeah. The next, we can go with the PTI, Imran. Uh, please hand over the mic microphone to him. Good afternoon. I would like to know uh, what are the kind of growth you are expecting in Indian economy because of SIPA? Well, very clearly, if a million jobs are added, if our exports, which are now at about $36 billion, which is about nearly two and a half lakh crores, uh, grows as we are planning, and my own guess estimate is this partnership can finally go up to about $250 billion of bilateral trade on both sides. So my sense is that this will give a big boost to economic growth, to jobs, and the opportunities it opens not only in UAE but in the larger Gulf or the African region should significantly give a bump up to the Indian economy as well. Please go ahead. This is Pramod from uh, ANI. Uh, sir, I just need to know if you could just clear, will UAE be investing in India and, and working as an initiative at Make in India concept? Uh, his question is, will UAE be investing in Make in India program? Yes, of course. I think there's a big part of the CEPA today has a chapter of investments. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, investors in India even before the CEPA. And uh, I met with uh, 20 of them today, large companies that are already invested in the last 50 years. UAE and India celebrating today is 50 years uh, bilateral, diplomatic bilateral relationship. And this shows us as well that already since 50 years ago, there has been investors, there has been traders, there has been families, people coming in in India, especially in Mumbai. And I think that's something which is very vital an aspect. We have trade uh, uh, the, the delegation coming throughout all India to look at where are the opportunities of investment based on state to state level and based on areas as well with the support of the fast track desk that we have with the ambassador, uh, uh, with the support of uh, His Excellency uh, Piyush Goyal as well to actually explore more investment opportunities that would come into India and vice versa as well. So the UAE is well open for investors to come into India, the, to the UAE, as well into the uh, after reforming the uh, the commercial law that we had, we have given now 100% ownership for foreign investors to own their businesses in mainland, onshore in the UAE. That has been a huge transformation for the UAE, and these more reforms as well will come to encourage more business, more startups, more as well investment into it. just wanted uh, to add on that, if we look at only 2019 investment flow, FDI from UAE into India, in 2019 it was $380 million, that is 2019. In 2020, 21, it, it was, the, the number increased to $2.1 billion. So that happened during the pandemic and even before signing the SEPA. So imagine now, after signing the SEPA, what will be the rate of increment? Thank you. Kushbu. Uh, 
Uh, my question is to Mr. Abdullah. Uh, you just spoke about how we need to imagine what kind of growth that we can see from the FDIs to, from UAE. Uh, I just want to get uh, the understanding from you. Uh, you said that India is at ninth spot uh, in FDIs in, in 2019 from UAE side. How do we see that growing ahead due after this kind of an agreement? And also, which sectors are you looking forward to in India? The sectors already been uh, uh, ironed out in the SEPA. There is a document we brought with us. Uh, my team can show uh, the document that we had given out to the, to the members. There is a huge booklet that we have that really explains the details of the uh, products, uh, the commodities. But the SEPA is not just on products and commodities. It is as well into services and to other aspects of the, as well of, of opportunities that can come along. Now, the growth that we're looking at, that we want to reach 100 billion US dollars from 40 billion or so today in the next decade, that growth by itself with the SEPA today, we can make it happen. Our economic modeling showed that this is, a, this is an opportunity of growth. It can actually reach that number within the seven to eight to nine uh, uh, years. Uh, my colleague, if you just come in the front, and I think that is important, if you bring a, a copy of it. This, this document today has most of the information that we have between the UAE, SIPA, India, SIPA, and this has a lot of uh, uh, explanation of the SIPA to explain to everyone today. And I would like to urge every one of you to have a copy of it. It will help to understand, and for you as well, to, to, to distribute it as well, to really bring together what type of commodities, what type of service, how many chapters in it. These details are very important. One thing which I want to as well let you know, there is on our, the Ministry of Economy website, we have created the UAE India SEPA, a very friendly, user-friendly interaction website that you can put the codes of uh, products and it will tell you the reduction or elimination of tariffs on it and how long it will be phased out and which year so. So the details is in the, in the document. It is more than 800 pages of an agreement. So we cannot cover the 800 pages and I think it will be challenging. But we managed to put it on a website that has about more than 1,000 products. But going through that as well will be a challenge. So we made it very friendly as well that you can search these products based on the HS code of customs and you can understand as well how long it will be and what is the actual reduction on that as well. So as it has been implemented already on, uh, in, in the early days of May and still it's very early, but how has the response been till now from both the countries? It has been very positive, or maybe I'll ask the Ambassador Sanjay Sudhi to actually put, because he was there receiving the first par parcel coming in from India to the, uh, to the UAE. So I, I, I can share with you that uh, as the day SIPA entered into force on 1st of May, the first consignment actually took off from India to the UAE and another one from UAE to India. The consignment from India to UAE was that of gems and jewelry. It was flagged off by our Secretary of Commerce, and uh, this was a consignment actually of three different importers, and total value was $1 million. So on day one, one consignment of $1 million was exported. So I mean, there is so much of uh, enthusiasm in the exporter community of India to use it that it has already been started using. Yes, sir. Ronita, please take the microphone from behind. I have a question for Mr. Goyal and Mr. Murray. Uh, is this only about trade? Is it all about trade? What about the deep historic and cultural ties that the two countries have had? What about that? Madam, actually, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister and His Highness uh, uh, the Crown Prince have already uh, agreed, and that's been in public domain for some time now, on a comprehensive strategic partnership. The strategic partnership covers, encompasses all the uh, wonderful historic ties, our cultural relations, uh, the defense and security engagement that we are now expanding with UAE. Uh, we now have a quad where UAE and India are partners uh, with the US and Israel. So we are, we are now on, as they say, on every dimension we are working together. And this was the additional icing on the top that our people-to-people -people relations grow with businesses also taking wins. And that is why the SEPA is extremely important for the overall partnership 
with the uh, UA? I think uh, 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 my brother Piyush said it all. Uh, like I said, this year is our 50 years celebration between UAE and India diplomatic relationship. I think a SIPA and I think it into action in this year really resembles the highest notion as well of the first bilateral trade and economic partnership between India to a country in the Arab world. And this shows as well this huge contribution and huge brotherhood that has happened to put this framework on the top of everything. It will, in the end of the day, bottom line, will create jobs. It will create economic growth. It will create investment opportunities. And as for both nations to actually now allow the business to business to come together to really engage, to have a conversation, to really see what are the opportunities to happen. In order to boost the construction sector, uh, do you have any motivation for the construction companies in UAE? Construction has always been a high percentage of UAE's economy. Uh, construction resembles between 10 to 15 percent of the GDP of the UAE. With real estate as well, some, some, some sort of that kind of percentage as well. The most important that the UAE really focuses on construction. There's a huge amount of projects that's happening. Construction, yes, in the COVID-19 has been slowed down, but it's not that significant. It has picked up and growth has been seen in that kind of sector. It shows construction is a very vital aspect as well for both. Thank you. Yes. CNBC, TV18, Santia. Hi, sorry, Shilpa also here from CNBC. Oh, uh, Mr. Goyal, my first question was, I wanted to understand how is this going to help the Indian manufacturing uh, sector at large with respect to be get, gaining access to a global supply chain? Um, is, is this, uh, is SIPA going to help, you know, Indian manufacturers go far and wide? Uh, you know, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Very clearly, UAE is a very well-known trading hub. It's a transit point whether it's for passengers or for goods and services. They have a very vibrant and easy to do business ecosystem there. They encourage uh, very good free trade movement, very good logistic support for goods and services. And therefore, a large part of the African continent is seen to come to UAE and transact or buy while from the UAE. Similarly, in the Gulf region, the UAE has a very prominent position and from the UAE, several Gulf countries source many products. Several CIS countries also have very good connectivity from uh, the various uh, ports that they have developed in UAE. Their airline industry is very vibrant, so food products which need faster delivery times can well move from India to UAE and then from there across the world. So I think in every respect, this partnership, the UAE-India SIPA, opens the doors to many, many other markets going well beyond the UAE's own uh, market size. And uh, while you said that, you know, of course, there are a lot of sectors and there's a huge booklet also that outlines everything. Off the top of your head, though, I wanted to understand, like startups is one thing that you spoke about. But what are some of the main sectors that you're, uh, that would be in focus, that would really gain out of this partnership? Few sectors are off the top of your head that you think will gain the most. Yeah, I think this is more of a test to me, but... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot into the uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, into polymers, uh, into uh, I think some uh, petrochem, yes. <laughs> textile as well. And I think on your left side, there's the booklet. We just put it there. Yeah. And that will have more as well into it. That will help you as well to really explain a lot of these uh, uh, gems and jewelries, medicine, agri products, leather, engineering goods, auto components. And as well, other as well to, 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 that will be included into it. It's about a thousand products on the website. Go to the website, 
It's very interactive. You can put the codes in HS codes and it can tell you exactly what's a, the, the tariff reduction is on. And you add the investment, if you add the investments that uh, can flow, you will appreciate that uh, that can be a big uh, support to our own efforts in India to expand infrastructure, to expand manufacturing. Then services from India also can give a give big boost to the UAE economy. So it's something where it's a win-win between both countries. All right, uh, Mr. Goel, if I may digress a little bit, since we're also talking about trade, uh, if I may I'm, uh, digress a little bit, I wanted to uh, ask you about uh, wheat exports as well. Uh, is the government really looking let's at... The, let's stick to the UAE, <laughs> uh, SIPA, but I can tell you yeah. that we'll make sure that UAE will never have a wheat uh, shortage. <laughs> You can hand over the microphone to your colleague. Yeah, sure. Oh. Hello, sir. This is Santa from CNBC. I know you said that right now. Let's stick to the event. Uh, but because we are lucky enough today that you are here with us, so I would like to, yes, so I would still like to, uh, if anybody has SIPA question, then I will pass Let's on the microphone. Okay. Sure. Definitely. Uh, yes, anyone? We'll pass the mic if anyone has any question. Please, I mean, please hand over the microphone here. My name is Harun Afroz. I'm from, I'm the resident editor of Sahafa Daily. I have a specific question for Mr. Goel. Sir, have you made any arrangement for single window clearances for availing the required licenses for your startups and for boosting bilateral trade between UAE and India? Well, uh, a single window cannot be only for one country. A single okay. window is for all businesses. And we have uh, done the beta launch of a national single window, uh, which will give approvals across the board for government in the center or for state governments. Many state governments have already onboarded on that. More and more departments in the center and the states are now onboarding. Our expectation is that finally we'll have one single window okay. for all approvals in India. As regards the India U uh, UAE engagement, we have a fast track mechanism which works with Invest India at the core, with their uh, uh, trade promotion body on the core, and both the embassies working in close cooperation. Just like we launched the bridge for startups, we have the fast track mechanism for trade in goods and services. Sir, apart from this uh, business, do you have any arrangement for this uh, exchange, cultural exchange? Meet in both the countries. Hajaro Sal Purana. Ji, what about Aur today? Bade gai. As, as people to people engagement grows, as business grows, culture comes naturally. It so is we natural. had the Dubai Expo. Every day we would have a cultural program over there. Of course. And Indian culture has contributed significantly over the years in the UAE. We have a very large diaspora, nearly three and a half million people of oh. Indian origin who live and work and who have adopted UAE as their own country. And of course, the dates from uh, the UAE or all the wonderful goodies that we get from the UAE have oh. been on our plate for so many years, Good. reflecting even our close connection on cuisines, on tradition. So these two countries are very natural partners. Can we make any arrangement for the exchanges of delegations, cultural delegations? Apart from, yeah. Good idea, we'll certainly do that. Yeah. So uh, nice of you. Thank sir, you. I mean, we'll be moving ahead with uh, Shishir. Oh, just one or two, two, two we questions. We are very tight on time. Yes, I mean, last so question we'll take. Last we'll, we'll take the last question. Yes, yes. Uh, hi, sir, Shishir here. Shishir, that uh, will be the last question. question. to the uh, UAE counterpart here. As Minister Piyush Goel have read, rightly said that uh, India is also looking forward to enter into the African market. Uh, just wanted to know that how UAE also will help India to enter to the African market and how you will be instrumental in that so that both the countries can uh, capture the market in Africa as well. We already, uh, that's a very good question because CIPAs always benefit when there is multi, multi CIPAs coming to, to into part. We have announced in the UAE our CIPA agenda to sign with eight nations this year. Uh, the first one is with our brotherhood uh, uh, country India that the first SIPA was signed. UAE just finalized the SIPA with Israel. And we are looking to sign it in the next 30 to 40 days. We are now in consultation as well with other SIPAs announced as well with Turkey. And as well, there are some African 
countries that we have a SEPA program in, co in, in uh, uh, conversation and we'll be announcing very soon. Now what that means is there's a lot of that kind of cross-country kind of aspects where processes, happens, needs to happen to add value for a product and then it can move towards that kind of nations. So this will bring supply chain of products closer, it will add value, it will create more jobs and it will create a trans uh, a continent movement of products from India to the UAE and to Africa. UAE today has been always a place where it's been a seaport, an airport, and as well moving forward to be a brain port. We're bringing people, talent, and thinking as well together to really uh, across the globe. So the UAE always been a hub for, for uh, businesses, hub for trade, and will always help India to actually push the products across as well the region. Yeah, due to constraint of time, I'll be announcing the closing of the press conference. Thank you very much, Minister Sirs, for attending the press conference and sparing, interacting with media in Mumbai. Thank you.